Thank God it don't stink here today. Anyway, <coughs> I was wrong. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Friday morning. We just finished class. We had emergency medicine. Pretty good. We had quite the dilemma with the uh, classrooms, right? Yeah. There was some kind of mix-up with the Chinese students and the foreign students. It was, it's not a big accident. Not really a big accident, no, but uh, never a dull moment. Anyway, we're gonna go off now to do my prayer. In this city, we have one big mosque, the Changchun Mosque, which is where everyone goes for the Eid prayers and the big occasions. However, for the Friday prayers, you can also go there. It's a little further. However, the closer one, which I prefer going, is the Merkaz at the Shinmin campus so it's not so far we're gonna walk now to north gate and go to the 13th bus so what do you think of the Juma prayer at the Marcus? well that's really good because it's somehow near to our school campus the big mosque is really far from the school campus so it's yeah a, very convenient yeah, isn't it very it's very yeah. convenient and another thing i think is that in the big mosque it's the chinese imam yeah. does the um, tilawat right so speaking chinese and their arabic pronunciation is it's not perfect I, i'm a type of guy that likes to listen to the beauty of the quran great effort the moms they try their best they keep the faith going you know people go they pray it jobs done but I, that's one reason i go to the markers other than that um it's great it's voluntarily done the imams at the markers uh, every the week students the students do the khutbah the only problem that we're having with the markers is they only speak arabic that's the one issue right they only speak arabic despite you, you, everyone you, you, here we're all here studying maybe pharmacy maybe medicine maybe china whatever course you're doing but we all speak english right so i personally think that they should also mix with english and arabic they should include the English in khutbah at the end of the day the khutbah is there to understand the message however it's always done in Arabic so that's one issue I have and I think that can get in the way of people coming every Friday hey what's how up you how you doing that was Hamza and Mahad. We did their group interview, if you saw the FIFA one. So that's the one problem I think, something that they could address maybe so or improve, it. right? They should do it in English. Or at least they should mix it. You know? Or mix it, so that everyone gets the message. But Otherwise, it takes that excitement out sometimes when you're going to Juma, right? You're just going to end up paying the first and your sunnahs and that's it. So I think understanding the khutbah is really important. That's the whole point of Juma prayer. There you go. If it's you the whole point. If understand the khutbah, what is that? Exactly. There's no point in it, yeah? There's no point in it then, yeah. Going there now, however, what I do like is really voluntarily kind of done privately funded by previous students that came here yeah so all yeah. students the students are running the markers the government regulation as well sometimes there used to be a restriction before but now nowadays yeah. it's not that there's not that problem either. it used to be a lot more tighter like anything to do with organized religious activity is pretty much banned whether on campus or the off or whatever uh, it's communism at the end of the day and other no, political issues and now they're a little bit more lenient mm, sometimes government officials will come in i mean i haven't seen them personally since my time in Changchun. they will come and observe a random time fine whatever they sometimes we give donations into the workers account and then they pay the rent the fees and everything so this is north gate we're gonna take the 13 bus that's a straight route a bus is pretty cheap so as soon as we're on the bus show you what it looks like throughout these vlogs you will see all kinds of things and facilities yeah good things bad things that's, that's the, the whole point, point of the project the exactly point. we're not here to advertise or promote if something is good we'll say it's good if it's bad it's bad we're gonna tell you straight off and that's a disclaimer there's nothing that we're promoting or being told to do it's all privately done whether you guys even come to this uni or in china in general you know what to expect you know what life is here like and it's constantly improving too i mean Changchun didn't even have the highway right there you go, there you they didn't go. have the expressway when we came and then within really? six months they've completed it and now there's a brand new subway lines coming up soon so next time if i'm taking a subway i'll try my best to vlog and i'll show you what that's like today my plan will be we just had class in the morning now i'm gonna go to juma i'm gonna show you inside what it looks like i thought it'd be nice to show you what it's like inside the markers after that i'm gonna go eat if i have time because i'm gonna buy a drone can i mention one thing about the market you know yeah yeah it is only uh, the chuma time only guys can go there because the space is not enough for them. Because the space is limited, it's like an apartment made into a market. So the space is not huge. It can take in a good amount of people, but because it's not such a huge space, um, only men will go to the Juma prayer. They also have days that girls can go there. Yeah, they do have days where females can go there too. This is simply because of the size. If the size was bigger, I'm sure they could have partitioned it, right? Yeah. Those people, they think we're recording there. We're not recording you, yo. We're just recording <laughs> ourselves. Chill, like, you know? You're not that special. Me. Yeah. In China. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, vlogging around in China, it, uh, it's not so popular. China, it's not yeah. so popular. So they all look at you like, what, what's this guy doing? You know. So 
Anyway, uh, near the Marcos, there's many halal restaurants as well. There's one right next to it. Today, if I have time, I go to a place we all call Saeed. Uh, it's a guy's name. He's a Chinese guy turned Muslim. He converted to Islam on my birthday, I remember. On the 15th of November. Two people at Marcos at that day. It was a Friday, it was my birthday. And I watched them convert to Islam. Yeah, it's very interesting. He has a burger place, yeah. Yeah, all kinds of Western food there. I mean, I've never had any personal stomach problems going there. Which you do with a lot of restaurants here in China. How about the shitang? The shitang, the school shitang is okay. It's really good as well, yeah. They have a Muslim canteen at the told you my first um, vlog. Um, I haven't been there myself for some time, but this guy loves it oh, there. Really it's like his the favorite place. He loves the food there. And the, I even I say the food is great. I'm a picky eater, but the food is really good there. The cuisine it resembles back to the Middle Eastern type of cuisine. There's an Indian restaurant in Guilinlu. If you've watched the introduction to our channel video, you'll see a little snapshot of Indian curry. They also have halal food. North Gate, by the way, is Xu Zhenglu. But, uh, oh, there he is. I lost him. So that main building there is that there is Walmart. Not much of a good view, but yeah. Should we cross the road there? Oh, did you have breakfast today? That's the problem. Thank you. My plan was to get up and go get donuts. I like donuts. Seriously? Um, Prefer for breakfast? Oh. Yeah. I was running late, so I couldn't go get them. Uh, last time you saw in my vlog, <laughs> I didn't get any donuts. Did you get don donuts at Baymer, yeah. Jida Chao Shui, Jida Supermarket. All in Mission Low on the ground floor. It's not the best donuts, but <laughs> they're donuts, you know. Especially when they're fresh, they're good. Alright, we're coming, we're approaching the bus stop. It costs one yuan to go on any bus here. And no matter how far you go, which is really cheap. One yuan is like around 10 pence. I'm gonna wait for the bus and then get on the bus. All right, we just got off the bus. We're walking down Shimin Dajie now, and we're going to the Marcos. If you were to continue down this street, you would reach the Shimin office, which is responsible for the medical school. If you walk further down this street, you will end up coming to the Shimin Anatomy Lab, where you see the famous Norman Bethune statue there. Opposite to that building, there's Jida E Yuan, meaning Jilin University First Hospital. You'll have your practical classes there, physical diagnosis over there. And before that hospital, if you come back, you will have the China Japan Union. Union Hospital, right? No. Well, which one is it? Is oh, you mean the third hospital? The small third hospital? This is a small third hospital, yeah, right? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a small third hospital. This university actually has three affiliated large hospitals. The first one is the public one, the biggest one. Most of your experience you will have, that I think is more valuable from the third hospital. The third hospital is the best place to learn and get your clinical experience compared to the first hospital. The first hospital is packed. It's just so packed that the doctor, the teacher, the lecturer, professor just don't have enough time to explain things as they normally should explain compared to as a third one they have more time on their hands try to get your hands an opportunity into the third hospital so stream in Dajian and then turn left onto Long Lilu you walk down and you'll find it from Marcus so follow us so we're gonna go up ahead and turn right so we're almost there now I'm just gonna come here and turn right you see this papa sign then you know you're in the right place but Hassan's hungry, he wants to eat first before we go, we've got time and he wants to go to a restaurant. That blue sign is another halal restaurant and then there's one just around the corner here. Is it this one? Or is it this one? Which one was it again? They moved? Oh, it's that one. Oh, this right there in front of our faces. As you can see, it's got the Arabic calligraphy. So if you're not good at reading Chinese yet, if you see that sign, you know it's a halal restaurant. This guy's going in there now, what the hell? What are you going to get? We're following Hassan around, trying to get him some food. They have a lot of dogs in China, little ones. I mean, very little dogs. <laughs> No, 
，这是我的好朋友，都奶校那边去了，这边没有了，没有没有没有了哈，你吧，客气，谢谢你，啊，谢谢，拜拜，再见。So I wanted to show you like why knowing Chinese is important. It helps you get around. He's gone to another shop now. As you just saw, speaking Chinese, you'll pick it up. You'll pick up Chinese. We're in fifth year, but if you're in your fifth year and you still don't speak Chinese, what do you mean doing? In your first year, you will have classes that will teach you Chinese. They'll still teach you Chinese throughout the five years. In the first year, second year, we'll have basic Chinese. Third year, fourth year, fifth year, medical language, so you can communicate with the patients. I mean, yeah, the professor will talk in in English with you, and your books, everything is in English. But the patients won't talk in English. They're not gonna be like, oh, hello, my throat hurts. They'll be like, oh, 你好，我的嗓子痛 You know, like my throat hurts. So you should really focus on Chinese because you might end up doing your internship here. Grab in. What about the clinical rotations you have here? When you go to the hospitals and you talk to patients, you need to know your Chinese. It's not hard to learn. Put the time and effort in. It's done. After all, you're studying medicine. What's a language gonna do? Nothing. You come here, you come out with a degree or with Chinese language, Mandarin. Yo, know? you're a doctor that can speak Mandarin. I think that's cool. That's awesome. So yeah, we're gonna go inside. The Marcus got his food. You feeling good now? I I'm still starving right now. But no, it's okay. It's, yeah, it's fine. Thank you. We just walked in from there and we came here and now this is the entrance to the Marcus. This is not the Marcus itself. We have to go up. All right. So we go up to the third floor. Yeah, let's go. On the second floor, there's a gaming cafe. One thing with the gaming cafe, though, in cafes here, they smoke a lot. And I knew one guy when I first came in first year. He had to go back home. He had some problem. He used to spend so much time in the gaming cafes that he had some kind of a lesion in his lungs from all that smoke. He got better here. But smoking here, they, they love smoking here. You go to restaurants, they'll be smoking. We're in the Marcus. Not many people here yet. Still early. And this is the one, one of the rooms that we pray. So let me show you. We have a small light for everything. Like I said, have a lot of books, you know, Islamic books that you can read when you have a time. Mostly Arabic, some some English books we have also. So yeah, it's really good. <laughs> وهو الباقيات الصالحة قالوا سيدنا عثمان رضي الله عنه ما الباقيات قال هن لا إله إلا الله وسبحان الله قلت بلى يا رسول الله قال قل لا حولة ولا قوة إلا بالله أي خير ما يكتنس المرء ويدخله للفوز بالجنة all right, we just finished praying Juma prayer Juma Mubarak to everyone if you're watching this on a Friday Juma Mubarak <laughs> I think it's gonna rain. Hassan's gone somewhere, I don't know where he is. I'm now I'm going to go to the New Life Mall. Um, it's called New Life. I don't know what. You see it there, it says New Life. New Life. Forget the old life, New Life. So this is all new, by the way. You can see it there. That's the main entrance, I think. It's my first time here. And that looks like someone very familiar to me. Is that Alex? Alex. Alex is at New Mall. Yo! Hey! How's it going? I'm good, I'm good. Vlogging? Yeah, hey. I'm How's going, guys. Hope you like these two video vlogs. Some more coming soon. This is not something premeditated, by the way. I know what it looks like, <laughs> but what are you doing? Yeah, I'm gonna look, look for the drones. You're doing yeah. it, what? You're gonna buy it now? Yeah. He's We're gonna buy the drone. drone. <laughs> All right. Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna go with you, I think. And stuff. Yeah? yeah? All right then. So, yeah. you wanna go to DJI? I was going <laughs> Chinese guy. Chinese guy going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the DJI is here by the way. Where? Alright, okay, so let's go. So we're gonna go to the DJI store now. Hopefully they've got what I want. My first ever drone. <laughs> and there we are. This is DJI in Chongchun. Let's go. Some pretty cool stuff in here. And this is the one that I wanna buy, the Phantom SE. I really want to get the Mavic smaller and more compact, but that's like five to six thousand yuan. For the stuff that I want to do right now, I see in front of the In the future, however, I did see the GoPro. GoPro looks amazing with all that detachable stuff and the gimbal and everything. Crime. Moment of truth. An empty box. The camera is the same on the Mavic, so the body has different sizes. 
guess. I mean, this is the one, isn't it? Yeah, this is the one. It comes from the official DJI store, right? Yeah. So, are you buying this or not? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, I might have. All right then, Team GA UMBCM, say hello to yeah, Sharuk's yeah. very first drone. You're now a proud owner of uh... Yeah, how easy, huh? It's like ting ting ting. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go and eat. I got the I got the drone now and now we're gonna go up and eat. Really hungry, didn't eat anything all day. Apparently there's a grandpa's in here as well. Should be better, this guy says anyway. So I just got back home, got the phantom back home, and before I open it up and try it out, I'm gonna go to the gym now. I'm gonna show you guys what the gym is like and some stuff about gym and study. Okay, so I had to change my clothes, freaking freezing cold. I'm gonna go to the gym now, to the fourth floor at Jida and Pema. Right there behind me, the big lighted up building. This is North Gate again. <laughs> Everything's like North Gate. I'm gonna show the gym. I'm gonna work out my back today and my biceps. Let's go. Today I took some pre workout and got some heavy weights. I'm all tingling up now. Look how nice and bright, huh? Thank God it don't stink here today. Anyway, <coughs> I was wrong. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Signed in. The music is whack. Let's go inside and get trained. No, I can't, I can't show that. Let's, let's start. To join this gym, it's around seven to eight hundred yuan per year. However, they do close down in the winter holidays, so you might set a waste of money. You can freeze your card out of the two or three, two times, three times a year, I think. But this winter, when I go home, well, I will freeze my card for the winter. If you are here and you can't go gym, then I think one of the best thing to do is then to just maintain at the campus gym. I think gym. Um, these extracurricular activities, hobbies, quite important because medicine is a demanding one hours effort and a lot of mental energy. So you need to do something to get rid of the stress, some physical activity. It doesn't have to be gym. I mean, I personally, I'm a gymnast. I do free running, parkour, mixed martial arts. After cycle, after one week of the gym, I spend one day, two days in that room there doing boxing and MMA. If I have a partner, I'll do jujitsu, you know, partner up. I would say that, you know, to really make your study more efficient to stay fresh in your mind stay motivated as well and just feel alive and good go gym it's great i mean today i woke up early went to class and then went to do my prayer went out and bought the drone had food came here had gym you know mind body soul it's all that stuff you should you should have extra clinical activities maybe basketball maybe football maybe volleyball cricket i mean a lot of the indian pakistani guys here yeah, they play cricket they have the whole personal tournament join in do these things don't just stay on your bum all day and do nothing it's not very healthy get that heart pumping you only live once you only have your youth once in your life make the most out of it life is not all about studying 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 getting good grades health should be priority number one in terms of gym if you're a gym guy and you want to know about supplements you think all supplements you need here in china in fact even cheaper sometimes you can buy them directly from like iherb.com or Taobao or Tmall do be careful there are some pretty bad knockoffs on there maybe if you know somebody here that's already experienced with buying this kind of stuff ask them and learn from them and then you can start buying them yourself personally me I buy gold standard whey protein I buy the big pack the 4.54 kg lasts me like four or five months it's it's great double chocolate flavor I take pre work like on and off like one week I'll do heavy heavy workout and I'll take it and then the next week I won't I'll just stick to creating and on my rest day, they don't take any supplements, just protein. Be sensible with it. Apply what you learn in biochem. Anyway, um, let's go home. I'm gonna get changed. All right, so just came down the escalators and it still stinks. <sighs> I think it's stinky tofu. They eat tofu and it stinks. And I was in uh, oh, changing rooms and now <coughs> the vents and 
I thought if I go gym, I would escape this now, right? Rather, the vent bring the air out from here into the changing room. I suffocated almost. Another thing about the gyms here in China and in the changing room, when you go in, uh, like men and women are separate, obviously. Everyone inside, when you're getting changed, butt naked. So if you join the gym here for the first time, don't be surprised. Just, I don't know, lower your gaze. Well, you can't lower your gaze. You just... Yeah, I mean, what can I say? It stinks here. No, let's, I, I need to go. <laughs> Disgusting. There's no escape. In the name of God, oh, it's invaded the whole street. You can never, this, this is one of the smells. Your, your, your old factory smells will never get you <laughs> used to. It's like your lungs refuse to breathe it in. I don't know how they eat this stinky tofu though. Stinky tofu. Imagine it tastes really good though, but how can you eat something when it smells and looks bad? I don't know about looks, but how can you? <laughs> Eat it when it smells bad. This is a freaking nerve gas. It's a bit dark. Can't get much lighting. Just want to talk about this topic about when freshmen come in their first year. Now, I don't know what term you may use or what term is common in your country or whatever you come from. But over here, there's a term used ragging. When first years come, freshmen come, and the seniors, you know, and the good seniors and bad seniors, we end up having these some batty boys, basically. I think they're the boss, that they own you because you're freshmen. They will ask you to do some ridiculous things. Now, by all means, you know, you can have your parties and have whatever gatherings you want. But there's a certain limit, a line that should not be crossed. Walking into a classroom or rounding up freshman students who have been sent by their parents or self-funded, whatever reason, to come and make a future for themselves end up becoming servants of the seniors, these so-called gangsters or whatever you want to call them. Batty boys, I call them. They seem to like act like they own you and they, they can do whatever they can command you and demand from you. All I have to say about this is that it's just pure bull. You know, you don't have to listen to them. If it's something that you personally will want to get involved in for the laughs or whatever, go ahead. But you do have a choice that if lines are crossed, if limits are crossed, you need to man up and fight back. Don't submit to them. There have been some past stories and experiences of past freshers where it left them really disappointed. Like they couldn't tell stuff to their parents. They couldn't talk to anyone because they were scared. The people who were responsible for such actions, they were like, oh, we know this many people. Oh, I am this. I am that like who the f are you really honestly you've come to a med school and you are here to study you are here to make yourself a better person you need to experience life have a good time not here to become some slave dog of some senior just because maybe he went through it in his younger career stupid just because that person went through it doesn't mean you have to go through it if you ever come across such crap this so-called ragging my advice is leave if you can avoid it if they confront you you confront them don't submit to them fight back it's not about winning that fight the win comes from not submitting to them so that's all i want to say about this i think it's ridiculous i think it gets out of hand so many times um fine if you're one of those freshers that want to be and enjoy that environment and if for you it's a law fine but if you're one of those that feel threatened that feel upset it makes you depressed you should go to the authorities and talk trust me the unis will not stand for this nice lamppost here got some light these students are in the final years and they like control a group of little minions that like, like they command what to do and they're behind everything they should be at the hospital in internships and doing their stuff rather they end up not going to the hospitals, not building their career, but trying to destroy people's career because they're incompetent in the medical field or in whatever field you're in. Good for nothing. Whether you're at this university, any other university, in which country, whatever, you come across this crap and you don't like it, don't stand for it. Fight back. End of story. They have no right over you. So I'm finally home and I can now talk to you about how I study. A lot of people have been asking me how I study and what I do. But from first year to third year, what I did was basically I studied the big book, fat books, those annoying ones that seem to never finish. But I grinded through them, not to master the content. That was never the idea. The idea was to basically be competent in each subject field that we were supposed to be competent in. Biochemistry, pathophysiology, physio, blah, 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 blah. I personally am... A a big believer in notes. I make notes and yeah I make them colorful, I make them most of all organized and accessible. I make my notes in such a way where I don't have to go to books anymore. If I need to answer a question for example and I don't know how to answer and I need to jog my memory, my folder or my note will be the place I go to and that's it. If I can't find it in there I will then go into the books and then add that piece of information back onto 
my note. Now, how do I make my note? Through first year and third year, halfway into fourth year, to be honest, I did my notes using Microsoft OneNote. Now, Microsoft OneNote is freaking awesome. So, for cardiovascular organ system, what I did was I went to school classes, I got the school PPTs, and then I got resources, books, and I combined them, I read them, you know, added everything up together. And then from that, made my own notes from my understanding to be able to go back to it rather than going back to PPTs and books and page after page where I can access everything on Microsoft OneNote within seconds by typing a keyword which is really powerful. So yeah on Microsoft OneNote you can basically create sections on a notebook and I made anatomy section, histology, physiology, pathology, pathophysiology, pharmacology and all of the whole organ system. So here for example these are all my notebooks like renal system cardio, biochem, basic history, GI, you name it. And I have these sections here so I have anatomy here you can then see the first page of my anatomy this is what I did my first year basically I just annotated the crap out of everything and I just applied it like for example here you know atherosclerosis happens here leading to ischemia myocardial infarction blah 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 some more info about what, what each of these things are you know I mean just study on what you think you need to know the most you know work on what you think you're weak at and this is how I pretty much made my own notes I made my own diagrams on paint Microsoft paint so easy I mean come on highlight key points of my own notes and these are all my own words by the way I'm not copied and pasted down anything maybe some key concepts I may have copied or pasted hemangioma and then some extra histo slides I would put on it's like a complete resource I then bought a graphics tablet I started writing my notes I can click here and type in for example keyword cell and it would find the written cell it has this picture recognition which is amazing if I'm looking for paramyx of iridiae or herpes virus or whatever I need to look at I just type it up here and it finds it this is how I have studied over these past four four and a half years so moving on to mastering the concepts now I started using Kaplan lecture notes and videos the lecture notes are all high yield points in Kaplan step one it's just so easy now you just just connecting things you're making concepts and now is what you call mastering the concepts mastering the subject now that comes in play you can't imagine to just master it in your first or second year there's so much stuff you just don't know or won't start even studying it yet once everything is rounded up it will it will get to you all at once and you'll be making connections so while you won't need to read the further two three pages you'll be working things out this is really cool because throughout med school many students even myself we still feel like don't know nothing two three is all in there you know it you just haven't maybe applied it or just haven't experienced using that knowledge in real life cases and questions and once i finished this instead of doing electronic notes then what i did was i started making folders of general principles cardiovascular organ system respiratory gi renal endocrine neural so here's one example i'll show you so here's my famous blue folder which a lot of my classmates have seen i despined the step one i just added on so here it's talking about the eye cell disease and i just put a page in here a high yield points um you know cell psychs move on let, let me show some more and then boom i have my own collagen synthesis notes right here for me this is a weapon I hope this whole vlog gave you a new set of information. I hope it was entertaining, it was useful. Like, and please do let me know if you have any questions, anything you want to know, any topics you would like me to cover in the comment section down below. Please watch our other vlogs, our other videos. Thank you for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope it's really useful. More videos will be coming. And keep subscribing, share the video, like the video. Thank you.